Oh yay, oh yay, oh yay. Comes now the College of Law to present its 135th graduating class. Would all present rise for the procession of university officials, the faculty of the College of Law, and its graduates. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the singing of our national anthem. Bro. 
broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the Please be seated. We have a little shuffling to do. Good afternoon. It is my honor and privilege as the Dean of the West Virginia University College of Law to welcome you to this truly momentous event. I would also like to welcome all of those who are viewing this event live on the webcast from around the world. Welcome. For 135 years, the West Virginia University College of Law has fulfilled its mission to educate lawyers and leaders who lead the state, the nation, and indeed the world. Today, our graduates go forth into the world, but before they go, let us reflect on the time we have spent together and celebrate this day as a milestone that marks the end of one journey and the beginning of their future in the legal profession. Commencement is a joyous time when we recognize and celebrate the achievements and accomplishments of our graduates. I would like to recognize those persons who through their constant support and sacrifice made it possible for our graduates to be here today. First, would the parents of the graduates please stand for our applause. Will the spouses please stand for our recognition? <laughs> Will the children please stand who are with us today? Truly remarkable group, the grandparents. Will the grandparents please stand? <laughs> and please, all the friends and relatives who are here with us today to show support. Thank you for your support and encouragement of our graduates. They could not have done this without you. Thank you for being with us here today. This afternoon, we are pleased to have with us many distinguished guests who join us to witness this hooding and commencement ceremony that celebrates the many accomplishments of our graduates.
some of our guests will participate in the ceremony and will be introduced later in the program. But I would like to take a moment to recognize the following persons who have joined us today. I would ask the following to stand. Provost and Vice President of Academic Affairs, Michelle Wheatley. <laughs> WVU Chief Diversity Officer, David Fryson. WVU Pre Vice President of Legal Affairs and General Counsel, William Hutchins. <laughs> WVU Board of Governors Member, William Wilmoth. <laughs> and College of Law John Marshall, uh, <laughs> College of Law Marshall Dean John Fisher. We would also like to recognize graduates who have served this nation with valor and sacrifice. The red, white, and blue cords these students wear today are a tribute to their selfless service. We also honor faculty and staff who have served. Let us thank them all for the dedication and commitment they and their families have given. We are honored, truly honored, to have you all here today and welcome and thank you for attending our ceremony. The hooding ceremony has its origins deep in the history of educational institutions. In medieval times, universities were truly a collection of separate colleges each of which was devoted to a particular discipline and professional training. At commencement time each year, the faculties of the colleges met, examined their students, and upon finding them to have satisfied all of the requirements of the college by vote of the faculty, a hood was provided to be invested upon those persons who were recommended to the university as being qualified for the degree. Over the years, the hoods became colored according to college and discipline. We are delighted on this day to follow that tradition. We invest the members of the graduating class of 2013 with the purple hood of the law, signifying that these men and women have been found qualified and worthy to receive the degree of Doctor of Jurisprudence. At the College of Law, our hooding tradition can be traced back to the deanship of the late Paul L. Selby, Jr., who began the hooding tradition in 1965. Today, the College of Law's hooding tradition remains one of the highlights of commencement weekend on the campus of West Virginia University. At this time, I am going to introduce the 2013 class president, Jonathan T. Storage. <laughs> Jonathan will tell us about Professor Robert M. Bastris, the member of our faculty voted by the graduating class to receive the award of Professor of the Year. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow graduates, it is with great joy that I stand before you to introduce this year's Professor of the Year. But before I do, I would like to take a moment to reflect on the great transformation that has occurred over the last three years. When we first arrived at the College of Law, the professors repeatedly said that they would teach us to all think differently, that we would all think like lawyers. Some might have said that they would try to hammer, drill, tear, knock, beat, and dig at us until we became practical legal thinkers. Of course, not one of us suffered such physical traumas. <laughs> but the same cannot be said for our law school building. 
During our first year, our forward-thinking dean broke ground on a great undertaking to expand and modernize our law school. What seems like from day one, our building has been hammered, drilled, torn, beaten, and dug up as preparations were made for its future. Like our school's physical transformation, we too have undergone a deep and fundamental transformation, one that has prepared us for our futures. Along with Dean McConnell's plans for the expansion, our College of Law has transformed over our years due to the high caliber of its students and its faculty. Within the last three years, our school has been ranked 15th in the country for its dedication to public interest. Additionally, our school's overall ranking is the highest it has ever been in its history. We have developed the National Energy and Sustainability Moot Court Competition that draws students from around the country. Our school has established a Supreme Court litigation clinic where students research and draft documents for real life cases that have been submitted to the Federal Courts of Appeals and the United States Supreme Court. Our law, law review, Moot Court Board, Trial Court Association, Public Interest Advocates, Clinical Program, and many other groups continue to maintain the respect of our peer institutions. The opportunities and experiences that come with working with these organizations will only increase as our school makes room for enterprising groups such as the new Center for Energy and Sustainable Development. It is very clear that as our school continues to build for its future, so do we. Our journey to this very moment has been a long and strenuous one, but I know that I am so very thankful to have experienced this adventure with each and every one of you. Now, let us discuss this year's Professor of the Year. Professor Bob Bastris is married to West Virginia delegate Barbara Fleshauer, with whom he has two children. Professor Bastris received his bachelor's degree from Wesleyan University, his law degree from Vanderbilt University, and his Master of Laws from Temple University. Starting as a student in law school at Vanderbilt, Professor Bastris began a lifelong mission to aid the poor and underprivileged. He started as a legal intern in the Middle Tennessee Civil Liberties Union in Nashville, where he stayed until he graduated. He soon became the directing attorney for the Appalachian Research and Defense Fund in Barbersville, Kentucky. He was a staff attorney for the Temple University Legal Aid Office. Professor Bastris eventually settled in Morgantown, thankfully, uh, where he has taught at the WV College of Law since 1978. He has taught classes such as U.S. Constitutional Law, West Virginia Constitutional Law, and Employment Discrimination. Here, Professor Bastris continues his mission to aid the poor and underprivileged through his service as a member uh, of the Board of Directors of the West Virginia Senior Legal Aid and the North Central Legal Aid Society. When this class began its search for nominees for this award, each student was advised to consider diligently a professor who has, a, has had a substantial impact upon our class as a whole, both educationally, emotionally, but more importantly, long-lastingly. My email inbox became flooded with nominations for Professor Bastris. What counted in the minds of my fellow classmates is what Professor Bastris demonstrates through his teaching and his impact on each of us. One student wrote, as a professor, his wit and sense of humor keep, keep class interesting and students entertained. Outside of the classroom, Professor Bastris is among the friendliest uh, professors at the law school and truly cares about students. Another student wrote, Professor Bastris has a gift for the Socratic method. Without prior notice, he delivers his usual piercing and intellectually stimulating cold call questions on unassuming students in such a witty and sarcastic manner as would make Socrates himself very pleased. <laughs> Importantly, too, is Professor Bastris's relationship with the faculty. One of his peers had this to say about him. Everyone on the faculty respects him. He is the leading expert on the West Virginia Constitution and very few people know how much free legal work he does for the poor and others who would otherwise remain voiceless in our legal system. He has led the charge over the last few years in seeking additional funding from the legislature for legal aid. 
and the poor of our state have benefited greatly from his efforts. His ability to teach so well stems not simply from his deep knowledge of the law, but also from his passion for justice. He is clearly one of our best teachers. After the voting took place to select this year's Professor of the Year, we found that Professor Bastris did not win by a little and he did not win by a lot. He won by a sweeping landslide. Being selected for this award is one of the greatest honors that students can bestow upon members of the faculty. And it is with great pleasure that I now present to all of you the Professor of the Year, Bob Bastris. Thank you, Jonathan. That was very, uh, very generous of you, I have to say. Um, good afternoon, everyone. I am indeed uh, honored to be here today speaking to you, uh, but I have to admit I'm also um, a little intimidated. You see, it's expected that the person speaking at such a meaningful occasion will actually have something meaningful to say. And, and, and that, uh, that, that the speaker will give you uh, something to take home with you and to preserve. And that charge is, as Garrison Keillor might observe, a pretty scary assignment for shy people, um, of which I count myself. We are much more comfortable with the mundane and the prosaic. You stay with that kind of uh, approach and people don't notice you. If you start to get pithy on them, uh, they, they, you, you start to draw attention and um, become uh, noticeable to each other, a, a, a condition of, of considerable discomfort. So it was uh, that I found myself in my office uh, looking for some kind of inspiration that would allow me today to uh, walk, walk that very fine line uh, between the embarrassingly vacuous and the noticeably meaningful. Um, my office at the law school is an odd place indeed to look for embarrassment. Uh, its decor is vintage college of law. And by vintage, I mean it, the decor came with the building some 40 years ago. It blends, if that's the right word, a sort of orange speckled carpet that is worn through in several places a set of yellowish green bookcases uh, with the color of a green banana that's uh, beginning to ripen, and black, uh, excuse me, and brown and white vertically striped wallpaper that if you look at it long enough, it's, it starts to dance on you. <laughs> Two chairs uh, for visitors complete the color scheme. Uh, one is a mottled orangish brown and the other has orange and green stripes. It, it's sort of a, an Irish compromise. You, you <laughs> give equal time to both the orange and the green. The office displays the usual collection of uh, family photographs, those of my wife, uh, that Jonathan was kind enough to mention, and my children, uh, a scattering of their drawings, and some sports memorabilia. There is also the usual professorial clutter uh, it's not on a La Faso like magnitude. <laughs> I'm sorry, folks, that's an in-joke, which these people on the, on the stage uh, readily understand. Um, but, but the clutter is substantial enough to give any visitor uh, a moderate claustrophobic sensation. Uh, makes them want to leave as soon as possible, keeps things efficient. Uh, from my desk, I can see the, the bumper sticker uh, that's been there since the 1992 and 96 mock presidential campaigns of Click and Clack, the Clappert brothers. They're the uh, car talk guys on, on NPR. They ran on the slogan of, uh, quote, unencumbered by the thought process, unquote. Uh, the slogan seemed uh, funny at the time, uh, but it wasn't nearly as funny when later we actually elected a president who operated on that maxim. <laughs> and I'm not referring to the one that was born in Kenya. <laughs> Opposite that ad is another ad uh, that I placed there also back in around 1996, announcing uh, my new course on the uh, law of procrastination uh, featuring uh, continuances, continuances, postponements, and extensions 
uh, subjects on which uh, I have unparalleled expertise, uh, about the only one. Um, the announcement for the course was originally made back in 1996, uh, but unfortunately we had to postpone it for several times uh, and then finally abandoned it entirely in 2000. What my gaze uh, most naturally fixes on, however, uh, is that which is directly across from my desk, uh, which I view when the door is, is closed or partially closed. It, it's on the back of the door, so most visitors uh, don't readily notice it. Uh, but I look at it regularly, and, and it gives me a sense of both uh, admiration and aspiration. The view is a poster with a 24-inch by 15-inch black and white photograph of Bobby Kennedy greeting a uh, small group of coal miners. The faces are all smiling and reveal that there's been a connection between Bobby and the workers. Bobby is wearing a white shirt and tie and characteristically has his sleeves rolled up to above his elbows. The poster does not identify the place or the time, but I've always liked to think that it took place in West Virginia during the crucial 1960 presidential primary and my research has pretty well borne that out. And the leafy hillsides behind the, the coal miners uh, give further a testament to that. Uh, in the photo, Bobby's right arm is extended and rests on the uh, shoulder of one of the miners in a gesture of apparent war warmth. The miner is in the act of, of taking off his, his hard hat and, and the movement causes his face to be obscured from the, from the uh, camera and renders him somewhat of, of an every man. It is clear, however, that the miner that Bobby is embracing is a black man. The only caption on the poster is a subtitle that says, and I quote, it's okay to care, end quote. And to me, that quote captures Bobby's last eight years with us. From that crucial primary in 1960 in West Virginia to the fatal one in California in 1968. The West Virginia campaign was one of the first of several transformative experiences for Bobby Kennedy as he came to this state and saw for himself how the rest of us live. Regardless how one feels about his politics, there is no denying his compassion and his caring that he increasingly displayed during those last eight years. The tenacity that initially marked his personality remained with him but it was increasingly channeled to helping and caring for the plight of the little people like those coal miners and to minorities that he, that such as he was embracing in that photograph. And I, and I see all of this come out in this, in this poster. And it seems to me it is okay to care. The wealth, status, and charisma of the Kennedys uh, enabled them, of course, to demonstrate their compassion on a very grand and visible scale but the rest of us can find our way, I think, to, do, to emulate them. I recently reconnected with an old and dear friend and was reminded of another life committed to caring. He was, for me and others, one of those chance associations that becomes a life shaper. I'll call him John, uh, mainly because that's his name. Um, John was uh, born into a Jewish family in Germany in 1930 which made him eight years old on November 9th, 1938, when he witnessed firsthand Kristallnacht, the night that the Nazis destroyed synagogues and Jewish businesses and homes across Germany and Austria. John's family lived next door to the town synagogue, and it was bombed that night, but the synagogue and their residence was spared from the torch because it was next to a hospital. He remembers his mother asking the brown shirt in charge that evening whether they intended to kill her and her family, and he responded, I don't know yet. John's family uh, fled from Germany to Holland, from which in 1940 he boarded one of the last ships carrying Jewish emigres away before the Nazis took over. They came to the United States where John was educated uh, and grew up and ultimately graduated from law school. And he went to work in the 60s for the newly formed Civil Rights Division of the Justice Department, 
led by John Doerr. He spent those years in the 60s trying school desegregation and voting rights cases throughout the Deep South, often at great personal risk to him. And then in 1969, he was among a group of lawyers who resigned from the Justice Department in protest over the Nixon administration's decision uh, ordering the division to switch sides in desegregation cases. So in 1970, uh, John then undertook uh, another emigration to a very different and foreign world. This time he landed in eastern Kentucky, becoming the director of the Appalachian Research and Defense Fund, then a fledgling legal services organization. John's arrival in eastern Kentucky had to uh, be akin to a, a sort of an alien landing in, in a science fiction movie. Uh, John was a, uh, still is, a, a very slight, short, bald, squeaky-voiced guy. Uh, the, the very the physical stereotype of, uh, of a space alien. And of course, he was Jewish. And he's landing in this most parochial and Protestant of all planets, eastern Kentucky. But he won the natives over. He built one of the most widely regarded and highly respected legal services organizations in the country, and he endeared himself to the people of Appalachia. He did so because he cared so deeply about her people, and especially the poor that populate her hills and hollers. He demonstrated that caring through his tireless work to protect their rights and to improve their lives. He also became, for me, uh, as Jonathan indicated, and for my colleague Chuck DeSalvo, our first employer after law school. He served as a model for us as he shows us, showed us what a caring and compassionate person can accomplish. And he's still going. He is and always has been, if I can invoke a commercial metaphor, like the Energizer, Energizer Bunny. He just keeps going and going. At a recent law school event, um, our good friend and colleague Michael Blumenthal recounted a conversation that he had had with his first employer in the law, then New, New Hampshire Attorney General and later U.S. Supreme Court Justice David Souter. Uh, the occasion for the conversation was, uh, I believe, uh, Michael's departure from the Attorney General's office, and Mr. Souter happened to ask Michael what his plans were. When Michael responded that he wanted to become a writer, the justice warned him to be careful the law can be a very jealous mistress. I was quite surprised to learn that David Souter ever thought about a mistress. Um, but I'm pretty sure that that was Michael's quote. His warning, I take it, referred to the occupational risk that lawyers encounter of becoming slaves to their pursuit of, special advan of professional advancement and of losing their ideals and compassion. And I think it prudent of me to remind our graduates today of this cautionary tale, and I've offered two examples of persons who thrived as lawyers, yet maintained and indeed enhanced and, and um, enlarged their compassion while becoming great lawyers. And I think Michael and David Souter offer two more examples for us. While perhaps jealous at times, the law is also happily for those of us on this stage very generous in providing lawyers with opportunities for finding meaningful, for finding meaning and self-fulfillment. Law is a helping profession. We are, after all, counselors at law. We don't all have the wherewithal of a Kennedy or the chance to leave movements, but we do get to serve and to demonstrate that we care, whether we are serving a client, the public, a constituency, an ideal, or some other noble purpose. We are truly blessed in that regard. And so today is a day of celebration. We celebrate the many accomplishments of our graduates, and we celebrate the embarkment of a new wave of helpers. And I want to, I want to finish on a personal note. Uh, each year, we on the faculty watch as a new class comes into the college and then another graduates after three years of our tutoring. Some might say it's more like torturing than tutoring, um, but we, we do our best. During those three years, uh, we observe each class develop its own personality 
as we have done with the class of 2013. It is, to be sure, a class of considerable talent, but has also been a class marked by a sustained enthusiasm and goodwill of caring for each other and for community. And for all of that, we at the college say thank you and keep it up. Please stay in touch. Stay in touch with each other and with us at the law school. When the dean calls, take the call. <laughs> Even if it's during the fundraising period. And come back and visit us. You know Tom Cady, at least, will be here. <laughs> and congratulations to all of you. Have a great career, have a great life, and Godspeed. Thank you. One of the things that I always say to the students on this day, because the students are so happy and the families are so happy, but I always tell them, for us, for the faculty, it's a little bit like empty nest syndrome. We're seeing all of these students whom we've become very, very close to move on. And that's always a, a difficult time for us, and I thought I would share that with you and with your families. And I think it follows very well the sentiment that Professor Bastris ended on, and we truly do feel that way. Thank you for being so wonderful. Now it's my uh, great uh, delight to introduce to you Mrs. Gen uh, Ms. Jennifer Berkebile singing My Home Among the Hills. This was composed in 1963 in honor of West Virginia's centennial celebration by Clarksburg native Mr. E. W. James. There's a land of rolling mountains where the sky is blue and though I may roam, I hurry home to the friendly Thank you, thank you so much for that. That was truly beautiful. 
At this time, I would like for the faculty of the College of Law to please stand and be acknowledged. For the past three years, the faculty has been central in the transformation of these graduates from students to men and women on the threshold of a great career as lawyers. I'm so very happy we have had the privilege of teaching all of you. Faculty stand to be recognized. Thank you so very much. The Justitia Officium Award is given in recognition of outstanding contributions and service to the legal profession. It is the highest honor the College of Law can bestow upon an individual. Established in 1978 in commemoration of the 100th anniversary of the founding of the College of Law, the Justitia Officium Award is presented annually. An individual bronze plaque is mounted in the lobby of the West Virginia University Law Center bearing the recipient's name and the year the award was presented. Our first recipient is Ms. Susan S. Brewer. <laughs> Susan Brewer is the Chief Executive, Executive Officer of Steptoe & Johnson PLLC a position she has held since 2009. Since joining the firm in 1980, she has focused her practice in the area of litigation with a concentration on professional liability defense. Admitted to the bar in West Virginia and Virginia, Mrs. Brewer has tried over 100 jury and non-jury cases in state and federal courts, and she has been involved in appellate proceedings before the West Virginia Supreme Court of Appeals and the United States Court of Appeals for the Fourth Circuit. She has tried significant damage cases involving alleged birth injuries, cerebral palsy, and quadriplegia. She has litigated and managed numerous complex legal malpractice actions. She also regularly advises hospitals and healthcare providers on risk management and loss prevention. Mrs. Brewer has been a fellow in the American College of Trial Lawyers since 2000, an honor reserved for the top 1% of all trial lawyers. Throughout her career, she has been recognized as a preeminent attorney by professional rating services, including Super Lawyers, Chambers USA, and Best Lawyers, which named her the 2013 Morgantown Lawyer of the Year. In 2012, Mrs. Brewer was named one of West Virginia's top 10 most influential leaders by the State Journal. Mrs. Brewer serves on the board of directors of the West Virginia University Foundation, and she is a member of the West Virginia Roundtable. She earned her undergraduate degree from Duke University and her JD from George Mason University. Mrs. Brewer and her husband, Bill, who is also a lawyer in Morgantown, met in law school and have been married for 33 years. They have four grown children, Elizabeth, a WVU graduate and regional, regional sales executive in Charleston, South Carolina, Blair, a physician's assistant in Charleston, South Carolina, Will, an MFA student at Columbia University, and Christopher, a sophomore at James Madison University. Our second recipient is Mr. Lloyd Jackson. <laughs> A fellow of the West Virginia Bar Foundation, Lloyd Jackson has helped lead his family's natural gas production business based in his hometown of Hamlin, West Virginia for more than 20 years. Mr. Jackson serves on the West Virginia Board of Education and is a trustee for the Claude Worthington Benedum Foundation. He also serves on a number of boards of directors, including the Clay Center for the Arts and Sciences of West Virginia, 
the West Virginia Oil and Natural Gas Association, Energize West Virginia, and the Discover the Real West Virginia Foundation. He is the immediate past chair of the Board of Trustees of West Virginia Wesleyan College. Mr. Jackson is a former state senator representing Boone, Lincoln, Logan, and Wayne counties from 1987 to 1991 and from 1995 to 2003. In the Senate, he was vice chair and chair of the Judiciary Committee, chair of the Education Committee, chair of the Finance Subcommittee on Education Funding, and co-chair of the Legislative Oversight Commission on Education Accountability. He practiced law in the partnership of Stevenson Jackson for 11 years and is the former prosecuting attorney for Lincoln County. Mr. Jackson earned his JD, Order of the Coif, from the West Virginia University College of Law, where he served on the Moot Court Board and is editor-in-chief of the West Virginia Law Review. He received his bachelor's degree from West Virginia University, magna cum laude, Phi Beta Kappa. Mr. Jackson and his wife, Trina, have two sons, LG, a graduate of the West Virginia University College of Law and the New York University School of Law, and Ryan, a graduate of the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. At this time, we will get to the moment that you've all been waiting for. We will individually recognize the graduates, but before we begin, I want to take this opportunity to recognize a special group of students who have distinguished themselves at the College of Law. At this time, I ask that those students who have been selected as members of the Order of the Coif to please stand. Selection to the Order of the Coif is recognition of outstanding scholarly achievement and contribution to the College of Law. West Virginia University has had a chapter since 1925. Its members are selected by the faculty from the top 10% of the graduating class who at the end of the sixth semester rank highest in scholarship. To be eligible for selection, a student must complete all classroom work within the West Virginia University College of Law. Congratulations to all of you on this significant achievement. We welcome your participation in this celebration as you share with your loved ones the accomplishments we recognize today. We invite you to express your enthusiasm in an appropriate way. And if you would like, you may come forward to take pictures as your graduate receives his or her hood. However, I request that you please hold your applause until after the name and all of the achievements of each graduate are read. Today, some of our graduates will be hooded by immediate family members who are graduates of the WVU College of Law or our members of the bar. As part of our ceremony today, Provost and Vice President for Academic Affairs, Michelle Wheatley, will confer the degrees. We are indeed honored that Provost Wheatley has selected the College of Law's ceremony as one that she will preside over this weekend. I would now like to introduce Provost Wheatley. Provost Wheatley will be conferring the degrees. I will be hooding the graduates and our Associate Dean for Academic Affairs, John Taylor, will be reading the names. Gary Alexander Aide, Lewisburg, West Virginia.
co-president, Outlaw Entrepreneurship Law Clinic. John Claremont Ollander, Point Pleasant, West Virginia, Clinical Law Program. <laughs> Charles Edward Amos II, Charleston, West Virginia. Charles will be hooded by his brother, Joseph Lawrence Amos Jr., WVU College of Law, Class of 2012. Erica Armstrong, Fairfax, Virginia, President, WVU College of Law, JD MBA Club, JD MBA Program. <clears throat> Gabrielle Elizabeth Ash, Salem, West Virginia. Gabrielle is being hooded by her sister, Cynthia Loomis, WVU College of Law, Class of 2005. Cameron Babbitt, Tampa, Florida, Entrepreneurship Law Clinic. Caitlin Bailey, Charleston, West Virginia, Order of the Barristers, Baker Cup runner-up, Moot Court, Immigration Law Clinic. Caitlin is being hooded by her father, Charles Bailey, WVU College of Law, Class of 1982. <laughs> Lindsay Bailey, Weston, West Virginia, Lindsay will be hooded by her father, Harold Bailey, WVU College of Law, Class of 1981, and her brother, Brian Bailey, WVU College of Law, Class of 2012. <laughs> Nathaniel Matthews Baldwin, Vienna, Virginia. Nathaniel will be hooded by his father, Roy Baldwin, George Washington University College of Law, Class of 1976. <clears throat> Clarissa Marie Banks, Shepherdstown, West Virginia, President, Animal Law Society, Entrepreneurship Law Clinic. Leah Shea Bassford, Charleston, West Virginia, Entrepreneurship Law Clinic. Andrew Harold Bell, Morgantown, West Virginia, Order of Barristers, Moot Court, Tax Clinic. Jeffrey Blair, Taze Valley, West Virginia, Land Use and Sustainable Development Law Clinic. <clears throat> William J. Bogard, Sterling, Virginia, Order of the Coif, Law Review. Travis Lyle Brannon, Glade Spring, Virginia, President, WVU Energy Law Association, Law Review, Pro Bono Volunteer. <clears throat> Travis Dale Britton, Lumberport, West Virginia, Land Use and Sustainable Development Law Clinic.
Michael Adam Bush, Wheeling, West Virginia, Order of the Coif, Patrick Duffy Coons Award, Law Review, Clinical Law Program. Michael will be hooded by his father, Brent Allen Bush, WVU College of Law, Class of 1982. Benjamin James Calkins, Charlestown, West Virginia. <laughs> Jeffrey Michael Carter, Clarksburg, West Virginia. Matthew Franklin Chase, Morgantown, West Virginia, Moot Court, Land Use and Sustainable Development Law Clinic. <laughs> Caitlin Clardy, Charlotte, North Carolina, Entrepreneurship Law Clinic. Caitlin is being hooded by her father, Carlton S. Chip Clardy, Jr., University of Tulsa College of Law, Class of 1981. Brian Douglas Collier, Huntington, West Virginia, Thomas N. Chambers Award in Taxation, President, Christian Legal Society. Shireen Compton, Clarksburg, West Virginia, Law Review, U.S. Supreme Court Clinic. Evan Kennard, Huntington, West Virginia, Moot Court, Entrepreneurship Law Clinic. <laughs> Sean Conricode, Naples, Florida, Luger Trial Association, Law Review, Entrepreneurship Law Clinic, JD MBA Program. Mark E. Kuhn, Lafayette, New York, Order of the Coif, Law Review. <laughs> Jeremy Benjamin Cooper, Lenox, West Virginia, Clinical Law Program, Pro Bono Volunteer. Nikki Costa, Falls View, West Virginia. <laughs> Joseph James Curcio, Bristol, Virginia, Clinical Law Program. Anthony Delegati, Fairmont, West Virginia, President, Democratic Law Caucus, Law Review. Anthony will be hooded by his fiancée, Catherine Wilkes, WVU College of Law 2011, and his brother, Matthew Delegati, WVU College of Law, Class of 2011. David Disk, Sterling, Virginia, Clinical Law Program. <laughs> Michael Robert Donadu, Hedgesville, West Virginia. David Thomas Estep, Moundsville, West Virginia. 
President, WVU College of Law Chapter of the ACLU Innocence Project. Krista Lynn Flegel, St. Mary's, West Virginia, Entrepreneurship Law Clinic. <laughs> Alice Barham Foley, West Union, West Virginia. Christina Michelle Fraser, Charleston, South Carolina, Law Review. <laughs> Brittany C. Furr, Roanoke, Virginia, Moot Court, Clinical Law Program, Pro Bono Volunteer. Jason Thomas Gain, Lost Creek, West Virginia, Order of the Coif, Moot Court. <laughs> Cassie Jo Guerin, Wheeling, West Virginia, Clinical Law Program. Madeline G. George, Charleston, West Virginia. Madeline will be hooded by her father, Sean George, Washington and Lee School of Law, class of 1980. Jonathan E. Givas, Morgantown, West Virginia. Maggie Lee Gompers, Wheeling, West Virginia, Entrepreneurship Law Clinic, JD MBA Program. Maggie will be hooded by her grandfather, Joseph A. Gompers, University of Virginia College of Law, Class of 1948. John Hardison, Charleston, West Virginia. <laughs> Katrina Noel Harper, Charleston, West Virginia. President, Defense Trial Council of West Virginia Student Society, Moot Court. John Hayes, Virginia Beach, Virginia, President, Veterans Law Caucus. <laughs> Hillary Hedrick, Buckhannon, West Virginia, Immigration Law Clinic. Andrew Herrick, New Martinsville, West Virginia, Clinical Law Program. Andrew will be hooded by his brother, Jordan Herrick, WVU College of Law, Class of 2009. Caitlin Lane Hillenbrand, Charleston, West Virginia. Order of the Coif, Law Review, U.S. Supreme Court Clinic. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> throat> 
Benjamin Hiller, Martinsburg, West Virginia, Clinical Law Program. <clears throat> Craig Ryan Hupp, Stanton, Virginia, Luger Trial Association, Clinical Law Program. Lauren Hutchins, Wheeling, West Virginia. <laughs> Holly Hutchison, Branchland, West Virginia. Joshua Allen Johnson, Fort Gay, West Virginia. Patrick Duffy, Patrick Duffy Kuntz Award, Clinical Law Program, Veterans Assistance Project. Joshua will be hooded by his cousin, Scott Messer, Ohio State University Moritz College of Law, Class of 1992. <clears throat> Carl Jordan M. Jones, Parkersburg, West Virginia, Land Use and Sustainable Development Law Clinic. <laughs> Ashley Joseph, Fairmont, West Virginia, Order of Barristers, Moot Court, Innocence Project. Jeffrey Davis Kaiser, Wheeling, West Virginia, Law Review, Clinical Law Program. Jeffrey will be hooded by his father, Charles J. Kaiser, Jr., WVU College of Law, Class of 1975. Tanya Kaplan, Bridgewater, New Jersey. <clears throat> Zachary Kinnaird, Richardson, Texas. Order of Barristers, President, West Virginia Intellectual Property, Moot Court, Culture of Excellence Student Award winner, Editor-in-Chief of the Student Blog, Entrepreneurship Law Clinic, Pro Bono Volunteer. Zachary will be hooded by his uncle, Craig Foles, Thomas M. Cooley Law School, Class of 1990. <laughs> Daniel Kirkland, Shepherdstown, West Virginia, Luger Trial Association, Child and Family Law Clinic. Andrew Tyler Kirkner, Pulaski, Virginia, Moot Court. <laughs> Mackenzie A. Klein, Rice's Landing, Pennsylvania. Ryan Morgan Knight, Washington County, Maryland, Immigration Law Clinic. <clears throat> Derek Knopp, Clay, West Virginia, Order of the Coif, Moot Court, Innocence Project. Jason C. Noster, Ashburn, Virginia, Order of the Coif, U.S. Supreme Court Clinic. <clears throat> R. 
Ronald Kramer, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Order of Barristers, Moot Court. <laughs> Dallas F. Kratzer III, Wheeling, West Virginia, Order of the Coif, Order of Barristers, Patrick Duffy Kuntz Award, Luger Trial Association, Law Review, U.S. Supreme Court Clinic. <laughs> Jordan Michael Kurth, Mon Monongahela, Pennsylvania, Land Use and Sustainable Development Law Clinic. Elizabeth Lafayette, Beverly, West Virginia, Order of the Coif, Patrick Duffy Kuntz Award, President, West Virginia Fund for Law and the Public Interest, Law Review, U.S. Supreme Court Clinic. <laughs> Robert Michael Lawson, Ravenswood, West Virginia, J.D. MPA Program. Robert is being hooded by his father, Alvin R. Lawson, Capital University Law School, class of 1993. <laughs> Matthew Liller, Mount Storm, West Virginia, Luger Trial Association, Clinical Law Program. Andrew Maffitt, East Berlin, Pennsylvania, Public Service Externship, Fall 2012. <laughs> Elizabeth Margolin, Charleston, West Virginia, Order of the Coif. John T. McCartney, Felton, Delaware, Order of Barristers, Moot Court, Clinical Law Program, Veterans Assistance Project. <laughs> Zachary A. McCray, Parkersburg, West Virginia. Joshua Miller, Princeton, West Virginia, Clinical Law Program, Veterans Assistance Project. <laughs> Brian McKinney, Westchester, Pennsylvania, Immigration Law Clinic. Heather K. Mills, Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Sherman Neal II, Naperville, Illinois, Child and Family Law Clinic, pro bono volunteer. Katie Marie Nyland, Piedmont, West Virginia, Entrepreneurship Law Clinic. <laughs> Michael Chester Nissim Sabat, Fredericksburg, Virginia, Patrick Duffy Kuntz Award, President, Public Interest Advocates, Law Review, U.S. Supreme Court Clinic, Pro Bono Volunteer. <laughs> T. 
Thomas A. Norton, Huntington, West Virginia, Tax Clinic, Pro Bono Volunteer. Aaron Obamudia, Alpharetta, Georgia, Moot Court, Child and Family Law Clinic. Monica Oglesby, Princeton, West Virginia, Child and Family Law Clinic. <clears throat> Evan Olds, Lewisburg, West Virginia, Clinical Law Program, Law Review. Andrew Faulkner Paul, Morgantown, West Virginia, Luger Trial Association, Law Review. <laughs> Mayor Patel, Beltsville, Maryland, Order of Barristers, Moot Court, Luger Trial Association, Luger Cup winner. Joshua D. Pearson, Huntington, West Virginia, Entrepreneurship Law Clinic. <laughs> Josephine Peters, Beckley, West Virginia, Entrepreneurship Law Clinic. Jennifer Pritchard, Branchland, West Virginia, Law Review, Clinical Law Program. <laughs> Jason Proctor, Sissonville, West Virginia, Order of the Coif, Law Review, U.S. Supreme Court Clinic. Numan A. Rashid, West Palm Beach, Florida, Immigration Law Clinic. <laughs> Dominique Razouk, Romney, West Virginia, Immigration Law Clinic. Andrew Tyler Reseter, Morgantown, West Virginia, Land Use and Sustainable Development Law Clinic. <clears throat> Brittany Remy, New Haven, West Virginia, Moot Court, Land Use and Sustainable Development Law Clinic. Jamie Yoshimi Ritten, Tokyo, Japan. Order of the Coif, President, Community Service Council, Law Review, Moot Court, Entrepreneurship Law Clinic, Pro Bono Volunteer. <laughs> Michael Rogers, Charleston, West Virginia. Michael will be hooded by his father, R. Terrence Rogers, WVU College of Law, Class of 1981, and his mother, Karen Spidell Rogers, WVU College of Law, Class of 1979. <laughs> Javon Romeo, Brooklyn, New York, Entrepreneurship Law Clinic.
Michael David Solerio, Bridgeport, West Virginia. Ty Chantel Shadrick, Cumberland, Maryland. President, Women's Leadership Council, Luger Trial Association, Law Review, U.S. Supreme Court Clinic. <laughs> Brandon Michael Smith, Glendale, West Virginia. Matthew Stapleton, Huntington, West Virginia. <laughs> Jonathan Tyler Storage, Cross Lanes, West Virginia. Order of the Coif, President of the Class of 2013, U.S. Supreme Court Clinic. William Marshall Swan, Charleston, West Virginia, Luger Trial Association. William will be hunted by his wife, Danielle Waltz Swan, WU College of Law, Class of 2006. Kristen Beth Taylor, Huttonsville, West Virginia, Clinical Law Program, Veterans Assistance Project. <laughs> Benjamin P. Visnick, Wheeling, West Virginia, President, Sports and Entertainment Law Society, Entrepreneurship Law Clinic. Lorena Waddell, Beckley, West Virginia, Immigration Law Clinic. <laughs> Gavin G. Ward, Beckley, West Virginia, Land Use and Sustainable Development Law Clinic. Derek Webb, West Union, West Virginia, Entrepreneurship Law Clinic, JD MBA Program. <laughs> Emily White, Spencer, West Virginia, Co-President, Outlaw, Child and Family Law Clinic. Emily will be hooded by her brother, Justin White, WVU College of Law, Class of 2010. Jonathan Wilson, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Entrepreneurship Law Clinic. <laughs> Jessica Ryan Winziger, Pemberton, New Jersey. Jennifer Wolf, Ravenswood, West Virginia, recipient of Cali Award in Professional Responsibility. <laughs> Brian Patrick Woods, Asheville, North Carolina, Luger Trial Association. Jennifer Yost, CORE, West Virginia. <clears throat> T. 
Thomas Zimorowski, Morgantown, West Virginia, Moot Court Clinical Law Program. Thomas will be hooded by his father, James Zimorowski, WVU College of Law, Class of 1982, and his sister, Rachel Zimorowski, WVU College of Law, Class of 2010. <laughs> Catherine Dean, Wheeling, West Virginia, Order of Barristers, President, Luger Trial Association, Luger Cup winner, Clinical Law Program. <laughs> Shannon Frederick Kaiser, Shepherdstown, West Virginia, Order of Barristers, Patrick Duffy Kuntz Award, President, Labor Law Society, Chief Justice, Moot Court, Child and Family Law Clinic. Shannon will be hooded by his father, Merrill Kaiser, WVU College of Law, Class of 1975. <laughs> Amber Marie Moore, Arveda, Colorado. Order of the Coif, President, West Virginia Law Review, U.S. Supreme Court Clinic. Amber is being hooded by her aunt, Grace Weigel, WVU College of Law, Class of 1989, and her uncle, Gary Weigel, WVU College of Law, Class of 1991. <laughs> Molly Russell, Morgantown, West Virginia. President, Student Bar Association, Luger Trial Association, Child and Family Law Clinic, Pro Bono Volunteer. I now invite Provost Wheatley to the podium to give her remarks. Thank you. Will the candidates from the College of Law please rise? Candidates, yours is a field of great and unique significance in our democratic society. To you will fall the imperative of maintaining the societal order and stability that the law represents, while at the same time safeguarding the opportunity for constructive growth and change without which a free society cannot exist. In your effort to maintain this balance, may you be blessed with leadership, talents, courage, wisdom, statesmanship, and eloquence. As West Virginia University graduates, always aspire to put your education to work, exploring our world's greatest problems. Continue to cultivate your global awareness and aim to create a more peaceful and just world. Constantly refine your abilities to uncover facts analyze problems and communicate clearly. Dream big and never ever stop learning. Share your pride in West Virginia University wherever you go and act as ambassadors for WVU and the life-changing power of education. By virtue of the authority vested in me by the West Virginia University Board of Governors, I hereby confer upon you the degrees for which you have been recommended with all the rights, honor, and privileges appertaining thereto. Please join me in congratulating our newest graduates.
I now have the great privilege of introdu introducing Andy Richardson, a friend and a 1982 graduate of the College of Law, who is the chairman of the WVU College of Law Alumni Association. Andy. Good afternoon. Uh, for those of you that were wondering why I was up on the stage, um, everyone who graduated receives a pin and a welcome to the um, West Virginia University College of Law alumni. So um, I see, uh, let's see, I believe I counted three of my classmates with children graduating today. That's pretty cool. And uh, several other young people who um, uh, I've watched with my children over the years. But graduates, uh, my fellow alumni, on behalf of all the graduates of the university, and particularly graduates of the College of Law, who have preceded you, I want to extend each member of the class of 2013 congratulations and best wishes. Let's, let's give it up for them one more time. Today, you are joining a legacy of success of West Virginia University graduates that reaches back almost 150 years, 135 years for our College of Law. Over that time, WVU graduates have succeeded in almost every field of human endeavor. They have been heroes in battle. They have lifted our spirits through the arts. They have revolutionized technology. They have saved lives. They have committed themselves to public service. They have protected our sacred societal rights as jurists, lawyers, leaders. They have explored the mysteries of our universe. They have built business enterprises that employ thousands and they have nurtured society's next generation. Now the story of each graduate is unique, but WVU has given you the tools to succeed, but you must each find your own path. Now with that in mind, I offer this charge to you, West Virginia University College of Law, class of 2013. As you enter one phase of your career, start learning what you need to advance to the next phase of your career. When you set goals, be flexible. Don't be afraid to change your plan if circumstances warrant it. As you work toward your goals, don't forget to spend time nurturing relationships. As you develop your unique gifts, Apply them in ways that make our world better. When you have to choose between thinking like the crowd or thinking for yourself, choose to be an innovator. When you have the chance to explore a new place or to explore a new perspective, do it. And as you travel the world, Wear your flying WV with pride. Now I'm going to, I want to, this flying WV, I, I'm convinced uh, it's the symbol of West Virginia University, but I've traveled the world and I've seen this flying WV in Prague, Paris, St. John's, Maui, Eastport, Maine, San Antonio, Texas. And there is no better identifier for the state of West Virginia, and particularly West Virginia University. Am I right? So you, so, you, so you wear that flying WV with pride. And when people ask you where you learn to succeed, just say, I'm a mountaineer. They'll know. They'll know. They'll know what you, know, what, what you mean because, as we all know, once a mountaineer, always a mountaineer, right? So again, 
Congratulations to you, the West Virginia University College of Law Class of 2013. Now in closing, I want you to remember something. I'm going to paraphrase my good friend, Tony, Peretti, Tony Caridi. Just as the sky is blue and the sun is gold, every day is a great day to be a mountaineer. Thank you. Thank you, Andy. I am now going to introduce once again our soloist, who is going to sing our alma mater. I would now like to ask the class of 2013, parents, family members, friends, faculty, and honored guests, please rise and join us in singing the words of our alma mater, written in 1938 by WVU graduate student Lewis Corson. During the singing of the alma mater, it is customary for gentlemen to remove their caps. At the close of the alma mater, we ask that the audience be seated and the graduates remain standing. Alma, our alma mater, the home of mountaineers. See As the 2013 Hooding and Commencement Ceremony draws to a close, allow me to suggest that this is a day to celebrate the fact that you have mastered the academic challenge of law school. I encourage you, the members of the class of 2013, to share a few more moments of camaraderie with your classmates and your faculty before each of you go your separate ways to pursue your individual careers and leave us in the empty nest behind. You have had many experiences at the College of Law that will be with you for the rest of your life, and you have made many friends whom you will treasure for the remainder of your days. As you embark upon the practice of law, you will meet many challenges and have many opportunities. During the past three years, we have assisted you as you have equipped yourselves with the knowledge and skills necessary to enter the legal profession. As you go forth to practice law, it is vital that you do so with such ability, honesty, integrity, and idealism as to bring distinction upon yourselves, upon your college of law, and upon the legal profession. Ladies and gentlemen of the class of 2013, we salute you. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the 2013 College of Law Hooding Ceremony. The faculty and the students will now exit the auditorium, and I request that members of the audience remain seated until all university officials, faculty members, and students have left the stage. I would also like to invite you to attend the reception honoring this wonderful class of 2013. Please join us at the WVU Law Center immediately following the ceremony. <laughs>